Well, welcome back to the shop. I've got something I've been wanting to do for a while, but it's taken me a little while to find all the parts and get them together. I wanted to make a, uh, an amplifier that you can kind of take with you and have it be battery powered. And so I just uh, I went on the Goodwill auction site. I bought this amplifier really affordably, and um, I thought I'd take this little guy and I add a battery to power it. And then I got some uh, boost converters to uh, bring the voltage from the 12 volt coming out of here to the, the rail voltage for the amplifier and the rail voltage is for the um, op amps in here. And I thought I'd somehow mount this on here because it's a chargeable battery pack. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to uh, put it together, test it, see how long it works, see if it works at all. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. So I've had a little, a few setbacks when I was, um, when I first thought about this guy, I thought what would be perfect if I could buy an old used uh, cordless screwdriver uh, uh, drill and um, something like this and um, use these batteries and just cut the end of the drill off and have it so you could just plug this in like this. And I thought that would be a great way to do it. Um, the problem is old used drills are no damn good. I mean, I this is the second set that I bought and I didn't pay a lot for them, but they don't work worth a darn. They don't keep a charge and so the first one I bought I just threw away. Second one, this one's got bad batteries too and I could fart around and try to get these um, you know, try to get the best cells from both of them, but it's just not worth it for me, right? And uh, so I was kind of looking around then, and uh, I found this guy, which is a talent cell. It's 11,000 milliamp hours, and um, it's got a little USB connector on there if you wanted it, and it's got 9 volts and 12 volts, and it comes with a charger and uh, and a little meter here to show how much charge you have left. So I'm going to try to use this, hook it up to these boost converters, and um, see how long I can get this baby to work. So here's the power circuit for this amplifier. And um, we have our, coming from the power transformer here, uh, we come in and we just have a, a rectifier bridge. And then we have that coming into a 20, plus 23 and a minus 23. And, uh, but then for the, and that's going to go into our power amp. Uh, yeah, that's going to be going into our power amp. And um, then over here we have two resistors and two Zener diodes. And those are going to be bringing the voltage down to 14 volts and minus 14, or 15 and minus 15 for the, um, the op amps. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these two resistors right here and I'm going to just disconnect the power transformer and I'm going to take my boost converter and bring it right I'm going to have one boost converter working on these voltages and then I'll have the other one working on this one and uh, I'm just going to skip this whole circuit here other than maybe the LED there because I think using a resistor here uh, to drop the voltage is just going to waste electricity and or waste power and um, and I don't really need to be doing that and so I think I can just bring the power in right here and right here and uh, pull this resistor pull this one yeah and I might have to pull these two but but that's what I'm planning on doing but first I want to just see how well my uh, boost converters really work So it looks like this whole cabinet is sealed and um, so we'll have to make sure we, if we cut any holes that we seal it off. It'd be fun to see what's inside here. So I just marked the color of the wires because I always screw those up. Yeah, it looks like it's ported here. So. Let's see, oh, okay, so it looks like I just...
So I'm just going to take the power stuff out. It's not important to me. These are some pretty beefy wires for the kind of power this thing uses or puts out. So here's our boost converter. We've got uh, voltage and ground coming in right here. And then we've got a plus rail and a minus rail and a ground rail in the center. And I didn't find an awful lot of these um, available because that have the plus and minus rail on them. Most of them, there's quite a few of them that have all different power ratings that have power coming in and power going out without the plus and minus rail and I really wanted that plus and minus rail because that's perfect for amplifiers like this. So I'm going to take one of these guys and bring it into the power section and then I've, and I've got another one here and I'm going to do that for the op amp. So I'm going to adjust one to 15 volts and the other one to um, the 28 volts. And we'll see if it can do it. I don't know. Okay, I think I'm going to leave... I think I'm going to leave the Zener diodes in there and I'll just have to make sure that I stay below the 15 volts. Well, these are two wires that are going to go to one of our pumps. Okay, so I just hooked up some a uh, little over 2K resistors to here so I have some kind of a load on it. So that I, if I, 15 volts would be fine for those op amps, but um, I want to turn it down and then I can use the Zeners as a little bit of protection, but not very much of over voltage. Okay, so I've got it. Okay, so now I'm just going to adjust this. Fourteen point five. Okay, so now I just have to put that into the circuit, and I think I'm good. So just to check this rail, if we look at an op amp, we've got our negative voltage coming into four, and our positive voltage going into eight. So if I look at, so if I look at my negative rail, I should be able to go to pin four. They've all got power. I go to the positive rail. They've all got power. So that's looking good. And then I took the center or the ground and hooked it through this little connector right here. And that's also the center tap of the transformer. And um, yeah. So I think we're looking good there. Um, we could try powering it up. And if it works, the LED should, the power LED should come on because I think that's part of that circuit. Let's just give it a try. And I just have a, a power supply that I'm using. Yep, and there's our light coming on, and uh, nothing's on fire, that's a good sign. We just check the voltage on the op amps.
to 14 and a half. A little bit less on the minus rail, but that's going to be just fine. Yeah, it's using about 100 milliamps. Is that right? Huh, I don't know. It's looking good though. So now, that's the easy one, but the harder one is going to be the uh, the one for the power amp. So let's get going on that. Okay, now we're adjusting this other one. We're going to want 23 volts. Okay, so we got 23 volts, and then minus 23 on the other one. Perfect. All right, now we got to wire this up. So I just got this little connector here, and uh, yeah, I'll just use that to connect to the battery. Okay, and now I have my battery. So I think we're ready to check this guy out. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Got our battery pack, got our plug going to our two uh, boost, boost converters. Boost converters are coming into our two power rails. And then I have the output or the speaker coming into a dummy load, which goes into my scope. And then over here I have my signal generator set to about 300 volts, millivolts, peak to peak, one kilohertz, have that coming down into the input of the amp. And so, let's try it. All right, let's give it a try. We'll switch it on. It's got a wave, nice waveform. So there I've got about, oh, hold on. I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to set my scope on um, RMS. Okay, now let's turn it up. So that's about 10 volts RMS. Okay, now I'm going to turn it down. So that's about 12 watts. Um, let's just measure the temperature of that chip. So it's about 113. Let's turn it up. That one's nice and cool. That one's not too bad, actually. Yeah, let's see if I can turn it up a little bit. There, it's clipping. So it's clipping right around 14 watts. Now that's pretty cool. Now that's super hot. That's hundred forty. Wonder if I need some uh, 
if I can get a uh, something to cool that better. I don't know what because it's kind of packed in there. How's the temperature and everything else? Yeah, those things are cooking. Those are all right. But that's, that would actually be quite a bit of volume there. Huh, I'm going to shut it off. And then I'm going to, I'm going to hook a guitar to it. Let's see, what, check this out. All right, so I've got got my uh, uh, I've got a bass in my hands. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Got some hum. That sounds pretty great. I can't really play bass. There it's clipping. I'm gonna try a guitar. I've got a guitar. certainly has got plenty of volume for what that amp is. I don't think it's holding back too much. Okay, so I'm running it right at about 14 watts, and I just wanted to check my voltages. 14.3. Oh, here, I got it backwards. So 14.5, 14.3. Sixteen and minus fifteen, and so it's really loading that. I don't think it's able to um, bring the voltage out completely up to twenty-three. If I turn it down, then the volt. So if I have right now, it's at. Uh, let's see, two and a half. Uh, just under a watt. So at five volts. RMS. So that's about three watts. So 
So there it's able to do it. Let me turn it up until it starts losing voltage. We'll see how high it can go. Hmm, kind of fell apart on me. So that's three. Yeah, see it's starting to fall apart. Let me turn it down. There it comes back. Yes, yeah, so that's not great. <laughs> I need a bigger... I think I need a bigger uh, converter for the second... Um, I need a bigger converter here. You know what? I think my battery's going... Maybe my battery's just going down. You know what? I'm going to charge my battery first and see if... I um, wonder if the battery's not able to, to pump out enough. I don't know. Let me charge up the battery. I'll come back tomorrow. We'll take a look. But so far it's been pretty cool. I mean, if I have to buy a bigger one of these, maybe I can. I don't know. Yeah, that one's just cooking. Anyways, till tomorrow. Okay, so this little fella here was um, not going to do the trick. Um, and, and when I looked up the spec on this chip, it's got nowhere near enough power, but I have a hard time finding a power supply that's got the split rails that's more powerful. And I found this one, which takes 12 volts in, but then has 32 volts uh, plus and minus. And 180 watts which is like way too much for what I'm doing here but what I did is I did a conversion on it and put it down to 24 and 24 volts I did that in another video so I'm not going to do it here but um, so I'm going to see how well this works and um, how long it lasts I still have to move these over into here uh, but it should be kind of interesting to see uh, how well it works it's kind of big, so I don't even know how I'm going to fit it into the <laughs> fit it in. But um, yeah, we'll just see how well it works. All right, so we have our signal coming out there, and here's our setup. We have uh, one kilohertz, 300 millivolts peak to peak coming through here. I have the volume almost cranked because you have 13.5 volts RMS, which is about 22 watts, and um, I added this little old computer power supply, I mean computer CPU cooler, right here, because um, this was just cooking. It's getting way too hot. These uh, MOSFETs here are getting kind of hot too on this power supply, but um, we're using right around uh, 4 amps coming out of our little power supply there. and. Um, I think we got 22 volts uh, plus, 22 volts minus coming through there. And so it seems to be working pretty well. So I've got a, uh, I'm going to charge up the batteries and I'm going to see what it takes to um, see how long it'll play like this. I mean, it's cranking out full amount. I don't think you could actually do this in the case because I don't think you can dissipate the heat well enough. But I also have to put some kind of a heat sink on. I also have to put some kind of a heat sink on here because these are really getting hot now and uh, which is to be expected. Um, they came with stuff for putting it on a, on a heat sink. Yeah, even the diodes are getting hot. So, uh, 
I'll leave that for another night. And there we are, showing our output, and you can see our, if I turn it down, Turn it down, our current usage goes way down. Turn it up, and obviously our current usage goes up. So I've got my power supply here. I need to heat sink these. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this in like this. like that and then cut this off cut this off and then put that in the back and take this cleat out here and put that in the back of the box kind of lined up with here and then I'll probably just cut this out to kind of fit that piece and uh, so then the heat sink will kind of be showing right here for there. I think that'll work. Okay, that's looking good. Now I have to figure out uh, where to put my holes for those and put some holes in for these. Well, there it is. What a pain in the butt trying to get all these little bolts in here using like a, a little tweezers to get that in there. A couple of screws holding it down there and there. Uh, it's plenty of heat sink for it, I think, because um, I it shouldn't get too hot anyway. But yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I just made a little few cuts right here and then so then it fits right like that and so we just need to put a couple of screws in here to hold it in place and I think we're set and then we need to knock this out here we'll just have to put another screw down here to hold it well so that looks pretty good and I'll screw it in there and it just fits in like this I get those screws in there that'll be nice I think I'm going to attach my battery right here and I think we should be cool. Okay, so got my little thing I soldered on there, little flange, screw through there, everything's good. Alright, so then I want, I want to be able to plug this in to the power supply. So I think I'm just going to use these two old RS-232 connectors that have been around forever and use those to connect here and here and then I'll connect another one over here. Well there it is. That's I'm going to use the, the plug in. A little bit tight there. Yeah. Looks, I think it looks pretty good. Um, one thing that's uh, one thing that's weird about this amplifier is that this is the heat sink, and the heat sink just goes on to this metal plate. But this metal plate just kind of is the top of the amplifier. Um, you see, it kind of—I mean, it's just the top here. It's not a great heat sink. It's kind of surprising uh, for the power that, given the voltage that this thing has and the power that it can put out, uh, like 22 watts, it doesn't seem like much of a, a power supply or a, a heat sink, um, but that's what it is. But um, this tends to get really hot 
and so um, I might put a little heat sink on here just to kind of keep it a little bit cooler while I'm doing my experimentation. Okay, so I'm going to switch it on and it uh, comes up nice. So right now, if I put it to clipping, we're at 13.75 volts RMS and so it's 13.75 squared divided by 8. That's about 23 watts and um, and it looks like we're just under 4 amps of current that we're using. This guy's getting kind of the amplifier itself is getting kind of warm. <clears throat> but our peak to peak is right around 20 volts which I think um, so that's looking kind of good. And uh, so let's um, let's knock it down a little bit to a more reasonable amount. I don't think you're going to run this completely cranked out. So if we bring it down to let's say let's see so that's about 12 and a half watts that's kind of what you might be wanting to run with um, if you're really playing kind of loud so let's just see how long it'll run on this battery uh, just kind of watch the heat watch all the components Yeah, see already that amplifier is kind of cooking. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, that's... Let me get my little heat gun here. Yeah, so the chip is running about 140 degrees. And now it's getting really hot. It's getting up to 180, 190, 200. Hmm. Yeah, and we're seeing that um, at that temperature, then the, the chip is starting to clip. So we're going to have to turn it down. This amplifier is not able to do that high a current usage. So um, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to let it cool down. And then we're going to see what current we can actually run at. A little, little surprising. So even at eight, so even at eight watts, I'm starting to having thermal problems with this amplifier chip with that small heat sink. Okay, so put a little bigger heat sink on here. Um, hopefully that'll help this chip, which seemed to be overheating. It's still hotter than a biscuit. Um, I don't know, hopefully it'll help. Right now I'm at um, 6.3. So, yeah, that's only 5 watts and it's just cooking away. Well, I don't understand that at all. That's about half what it's rated for. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so um, I just kind of put the screws in just to see how it look. And uh, so I'm just going to push that in there for the time being. But I want to put my battery right about here. And so I 3D printed myself a little box um, to go right here. And so I'm going to screw that in. And um, I'll have to figure out how to bring the wire around so it doesn't look completely funny there. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. But yeah, and then I also need to seal up this hole. This cabinet is kind of sealed. I've got a little bit of a gap here, but um, when I was playing it before, you know, air was pouring out of here and here. There are two ports right here, so, but I should seal up a giant hole like this, so I'll do that. I think I'm also going to put a fuse in it and uh, I'll probably just drill a hole through here um, so that this will fit and I'll just put that in like that and uh, I'll wire, wire it in. That looks a little cheap but yeah yeah I'll just drill a hole through there. I thought I'd talk a little bit about you know the battery here. I initially there's two different batteries that I looked at. There's this one and um, there's, they're about the same amount of power, about 11,000 um, milliamp hours, right? So I think this thing, when it was cooking, pretty turned out pretty hard. It looked like about three amps that it was drawing. All the way, it would take about four amps, but I don't think you could run very long like that. But a more reasonable three amps if you're really playing loud. Uh, so that's three amps, 11 amp hours. And so that should run for about three hours then, right? And uh, these are about the same amount of power. Now this one has the advantage that it also has a, a buck boost converter for USB and for nine volts out. And it also has a little gauge right here to tell you how much battery is left. So I thought that was pretty nice. Um, but this one, I think it's got some, some nice things about it too. Is Number one, it's got a kind of a, here you have to, take the charger and plug it in here uh, you have to unplug what's connected to it that's kind of a hassle where this one just has kind of a dedicated plug for the charger and then dedicated wires coming out so this would be really nice because then I could hook this into the power switch on the front of the amp and uh, where this one the power switch you don't use it at all you just turn it on or off here the other thing is is this this one came with this and um, it's a little weird to hook up, but it took me a little bit to figure it out. So you hook it up like, because this is ground right here, and this yellow wire is actually ground. And um, so if we hook this up, then this will say um, that it's the first battery's at 4.15, second one at 4.16, third one's at 4.18, and then 12 volts overall. So it'll show you the charge, but I would have had to put a switch in. I mean, so that's kind of nice to show you how much battery is left. But on the other hand, uh, then I'd have to put a switch to shut this off when I was done using it, right? Where this one, when you shut it off, the gauge goes off. So that was a little bit. So there's pluses and minuses to, bo to both of them, right? So the thing is with lithium ion then, so if you have minus, plus, minus, plus, and you just wire these things in, in series like this, right, so then you get 12 volts coming out. The problem with lithium ion is, is you don't want any of these cells, number one, to go below a certain voltage. I think it's, it's around two volts. And you don't want certain ones in the series to overcharge and the other one to undercharge. So these batteries have like a little controller in them. And that controller, you know, attaches to each of the node points right there. And that controller then can control the amount of charge it goes to each battery so that the batteries all come up at the same, at the same rate. And here's what one of those controllers looks like. And uh, so here's the battery plus, battery two, which would be 
yeah, so here's the battery plus, here's the battery two, here's battery one, and here's ground, right? And so, yeah, and so that these controllers have a little controller here and a couple of MOSFETs that, that turn the charging on or off, and uh, a little, this one's got a current sense as well. Now, you might be wondering why I'm going into this. It's because when I got this battery, it uh, worked for a little bit and then it failed. And so I should have returned it, but instead I took it all apart just to see if I could fix it. And it had a little circuit board like this, but it was kind of bent. <laughs> it was taped to the battery and kind of bent around. And so I bought these, I think I bought three of them for about $4. And, um, and soldered that into here. This has probably got one in there too. But you can see that when you look at this, this graph here, what it's showing you is the 12 volts coming out and then the voltage at each battery node, right? And you can see they're pretty well matched and they're matched because a charger controller like this is, is probably inside here and I know there's one inside here because I had to replace it. Uh, I couldn't fix it. I, I tried a little bit to fix it, but it, it didn't work out. So anyways, that's, that's a different battery technology. I mean, the different, some different battery choices. Okay. That's on there pretty nice, so. Put it in there. Doot. Okay. Yeah, that's looking great. A couple of notes about um, the circuit board before we go on. These two filter capacitors, they're the ones that are filtering um, the hop amp signal and these two are actually filtering uh, the signal coming out. This one's already got a lot of filtering, so I'm just leaving those in there. The other thing is, is that if you look down here, those um, Zener diodes that are limiting, helping set the voltage on the original circuit board, I had to clip those out. They were getting hot, and um, I didn't expect that, but I did. The other thing um, is that the original heatsink pad here I it, it, this chip was getting super hot and there wasn't that much heat transferring so I just replaced it with I mean it's nothing fancy but I replaced it with a Teflon one and uh, now the heat transfer is much better so I would definitely recommend that so so taking a good look at the front everything's the same except the power button doesn't have any effect because that's on the back then the we use a switch on the, the battery pack, and then the battery pack has a little uh, thing to show how much is used. And there's the, you know, we could, if we wanted to, we could buy two of these and swap them in and out. And then to charge it, you just have to pull this out and put the charger in here. And there's a place to run USB. So anyways, I thought it was a pretty interesting project. If I were to do it all over again, I would definitely get a little bit of a bigger amp with an open back um, it did turn all right, out all right, putting all this stuff on the back here, but you're really kind of tight for space in this particular amp, and this particular amp really has problems with overheating when you're doing anything other than a guitar signal. So, well, here it is, our battery-powered amp. of a guitarist but I think it sounds pretty good and um, so I did my final power calculations on it I put an ammeter on it clamp and it's really using about two and a half amps when you're really really cranking it sometimes it'll bump up in the four amp uh, range but that's uh, that's just very periodic and um, so with an 11 amp hour uh, battery I think this will last a good long time maybe even in the three four hours uh, if everything's going good and uh, so I think that's gonna be pretty great and I haven't had a chance to I haven't figured out a good way to really test it long term to see how long that battery is gonna last but uh, I have high hopes for it anyway so that's the project and you can let me just put this away a second well thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, please uh, if you liked it subscribe and hit like and thanks for stopping by